metal, plastic, and resin. These are the materials we as wargamers are used to working with. Add in the advancements to 3D printing in the past few years, how are wargaming companies going to survive? Is there a better or cheaper option available? Well, there just might be. I was sent these miniatures by Lazy Squire Games, and they are made from PVC plastic. I'm not going to go into the chemical differences between different types of plastic, mainly because I'm not a scientist. But if you've ever done much wargaming, touched D&D miniatures, or even kids' toys or board game models, you'll know this type of material. They're generally cheaper, less detailed, bendy, and just worse. Well, Lazy Squire have re-released their miniatures from Storm Sunder and have another Kickstarter going for a game called Wild Ascent. These are all PVC models. What I'm gonna do is go through, review the miniatures, paint them, spray them, and talk about them as we go. If you wanna check them out for yourself, all links are down below. On first impressions, I think these look pretty good. The details are crisps. Crisps? I mean crisp. Anyway, I don't wanna drag on too long, so I thought I'd enlist Kira here as someone who's pretty new to the hobby and get her opinion on these models. Ta-da! I keep knocking that camera. <laughs> it's me, I'm back, and I'm going to be looking at these models, which instantly look very cool. I haven't actually seen them yet. Um, all I know is that they're PVC, and I guess PVC is a cheaper medium than plastic. So I guess that means these are probably cheaper than Games Workshop models. Am I right? I don't know. Anyway, what is PVC? I have no idea. I think PVC, I think gutters and, you know, those white doors with the glass panes. Anyway, I don't really know what PVC is. But I'm excited to have a look at these. Okay, I'm just gonna grab two. Ooh, they're heavier than plastic, but I actually think that's a good thing because I have a tendency to twang my models across the room by accident. Um, they feel weird, they, they feel like Wa wax? They feel like candles, which is kind of weird. They look amazing. Okay, I'm kind of surprised. Like, I don't know what game these are for, but I kind of want to play it. <laughs> They're awesome. Some of these models are huge as well. Loads of details, no annoying little, I say tide marks, but that's probably not what they're called on printed models. Um, I, I'm interested to see how they are when you paint them, but they, they look fantastic. The bases are awesome. I think the main, point that I like is the fact you don't have to build them because I suck at building models. My main issue is that you squeeze them together and then there's gaps and it's pokey on your fingers. Don't like that. I don't even know which one I want to paint. I have to choose one to paint and I don't know. We've got Meltman, we've got Lizard on Lizard, Lizard on Lizard action. Booby Lady, right, she's in the maybe pile. Another cool lady. I like that there's lady models. Yes. Here to review them and I give it a yes. <laughs> if this is cheaper than, honestly, than plastic, why are people not just doing this? And that is a very good question. Why aren't companies doing this? Is it because we have a preconception that these are bad models, that PVC are cheap? Or is it because no company has done them justice? I'm gonna use my airbrush, the trusty old machine, and get some paint down on these models. I've actually washed this one in soap and water and I've not washed another one, just to give a different example of how the paint adheres. It's something I read online a lot and people seem to feel that the paint doesn't stick that well to them. Kira also said they feel waxy. I'm not sure if that's a byproduct of the process or if it's just how the models feel. Having applied a black base coat, I'm coming in with a white Zenithal. I love this Liquitex ink, it's the thing I use the most. Although slightly thinner than the Games Workshop paints or other brands, it is really, really good for putting that stark contrast down. This will let us see the models in detail a bit better. And I think you'll agree with me, even just through these shots, that there is a lot of detail on these models. I had no difficulty with getting the paint to stick down, either the washed or the unwashed one is exactly the same. Now to add some color. We're painting the vampire ones. They're the ones I picked out and what better color for a vampire than a good old gory red. Thinning this paint down a little more through the airbrush and then spraying it over a xenophil gives you a natural contrast and starts to really put some shade and highlight onto the model. Of course, you can use any color you like. I picked red, but just for the variety, I'm gonna do a purple one as well, because purple is another very vampire-y color. These models have a real Castlevania vibe about them. They feel like Alucard, if you've seen the show. If not, do check it out on Netflix, it is very good. But they have a really classic vampire look. Obviously, they're a different sculpt and a different style to Games Workshop models, but that doesn't mean it could, isn't something they could introduce. I'm gonna put a quick highlight over this using the Game Air Vallejo Bloody Red. 
I'm also going to do a third model. This one feels Lord of the Rings elfin styled or something from Skyrim. So gold armor, red or purple capes, and that's how we're looking. This is one coat over. The details are very obvious. I don't think I've had any troubles at all. Everything has stuck so far and the paint has gone on fine. Happy with the results? Let's keep going. Using Balthazar Gold from Citadel, I'm going to use this to paint all of the trims and the filigree on the capes, as well as the armor on the vampire halberd shield bearing model. This is the classic elf style and I'm looking forward to sticking a wash on this to see how it comes out. I'm also going to paint as finely as I can as much of the detail on this. There is a lot there, it is quite a bit of work, but it sticks fine. Next, it's just filling in the rest of the details. Mornfang Brown for the leather, Rakarth Flesh for the base tones of the vampire and Dryad Bark for the weapons. Carefully placing this on the models in all those little recesses, it is a little bit difficult to find exactly what parts of the model are meant to be what. There are no painting guides to these as of yet, although I'm sure more will come. And in fact, this could be one for you. Seraphim Sapia instead of Agrax, just because it has a slightly pinker color to it and I think it's not going to be as strong or as stark as maybe Agrax would be on these parts of the models. They do definitely feel different. They're stickier or tackier. I guess I can overcome that by using a varnish as well. So maybe varnishing these after having applied the base coats was the way to go. Keeping these simple, I don't want to overcomplicate the process. I'm just using non oil over the lead belcher metal. A pretty standard way to paint metals and that's how they're looking. This model is essentially done. Sure, I could put more time into it, do a bit more work on the base, but happy enough to show you how they're going. Now I want to finish this model off because this I think is a cool looking sculpt. It has a lot of ruffles around there from the kind of 1800s period of, of the vampires and lots of silver necklaces and parts around the model. Painting a couple of the gems using the Waystone green gem paint from Games Workshop. And then to finish them off, I'm just gonna use some blood for the blood god around the mouth to give him that bloody vampire feel. Less than an afternoon's work, I put a little OSL as well onto the back staff. I assume that's some kind of gem at the base, maybe I'm wrong, but I just think it finishes the model off. What do you think? How do you feel about that as a model? Is it the kind of thing you'd be happy to paint? Having spoken to the people from Lazy Squire Games, these models are significantly cheaper to produce, just harder to produce. Games Workshop could lower their costs. These are around a third the price of Games Workshop models for similar and potentially better quality. Yes, they feel different. Yes, it's something we're not used to, but maybe that's not a bad thing. I'm always apprehensive when companies want to send me models because I'm hesitant to give a bad review. I'll always be honest, and honestly, these have earned a good review. If you agree, do check out the links below. I've left links there to their Kickstarters, as well as links to my own Patreon if you've enjoyed this video. That's it for now. Take care.